Let us turn our Bibles to the book of John. John chapter 9. From verse 1 to 5. John chapter 9. From verse 1 to 5. I read in the name of Jesus. Jesus heals a blind a man born blind. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must walk the works of him who has sent me while it is day. For night is coming where no one can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are going to share briefly on the topic, Walk while it is day. Walk while it is day. This is a story of a man who was blind and came in contact with Jesus. And Jesus' disciples were asking him, why was this man born blind? Is it as a result of the sin that his parents committed? Or is it as a result of the sin that he himself has committed? It is a similar situation today in our lives. Some people are going through situations around us. Not because of their ancestors' sins, or not because of their own personal sins, or not because of the sins of their descendants, but because God wants us to do something in their lives for his glory. Certain things happen beside us, or certain things happen around us, or God under, uh, 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 um, expects us or allows us to undergo certain situations, to undergo certain difficulties, to undergo certain challenges, because... He wants us to do that which he has called us to do so that he will take the glory. It is not a coincidence that you are born into the kind of family that you are born into. It is not the coincidence that you are married into the kind of family that you are married into. It is not a coincidence that you live in the kind of place that you live in. Or it's not a coincidence that you are where you are now. It is because God wants you to say that which he has instructed you to say. He wants me to showcase that which he has put in me as a gift or as a talent. He wants me to use that thing that he has put on the inside of me so that glory, honor, and adoration will be given to his holy name. Most of us are not using the things that God has put on the inside of us because we are not even aware of the things. Most of us are not even using the things that God has put on the inside of us because we are not even conscious. We are not even, you know, ready to go back to God and ask God that what is it that you have put in me that you want me to use in this particular situation? Jesus goes ahead to explain that we must work the work of he who has sent us while it is day. For night cometh when we will not be able to walk. Day represents many things. Day represents our youthfulness. The Bible says, do not forget your creator in the days of your youth. That's Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Most of us are young, but we are using our youthfulness to do other things. We are speaking good English. We are doing all the kinds of things that are not bringing honor to our creator in the days of our youth. The day of somebody's life signifies or, see, or represents when the person is at the best state, when your brain is working, you are active, you are smart, you are in, you are, in fact, all your, your muscles, your body organs are working as they should. That is the day of our lives. Are we doing the work of him who has sent us while it is day? Or are we busy giving excuses? Are we busy giving explanations? The day of somebody's life signifies a period when there is no persecution. Most of us are not living in Arab nations where by the time they even see you with a Bible, that alone is an offense. Not to talk of when you even open the Bible to read what is in it. We are living in places where the persecution is not as much. Yet, we are speaking grammar. We are not doing the work of him who has sent us. The day when there is no persecution, we are not doing the things that we are expected to do. I wonder what will happen. 
when the night will come. We are not doing the work of him who has sent us during the day when we have encouragement from the brethren. We still have the opportunity to fellowship as brethren. We have the opportunity to, to, to gather with one another, to pray with one another, to interact with one another. We have all the facilities, the gadgets, the internet, the everything at our disposal. Yet, some of us are not doing the work of the Father. The day in our lives signifies the, the period where our children are still young, when it is easier to correct them. When you tell a child something and the child will ask you for explanation and you explain, and the child will say, thank you, I did not see it like that. When the child, you tell the child to do something and the child will do it easily, not because he or she necessarily wants to do it, but because he or she has not yet gathered the stamina to retaliate. When the bad habits that are in the child have not yet become deeply rooted. The day for some of us signifies when we are single. We are supposed to serve God with our all when we are single. There's no husband, there's no wife asking you a question. You don't have to think on behalf of the whole family as a sister. That is the time when God expects the best of us. The day also represents those who are married. Because the Bible says one chase 1,000, but two chase, chase 10,000. 10, that is the day uh -huh. that we are supposed to use to do the work of he who has sent us. But what are we doing? We are doing the opposite. Most of us are young. We are waiting for when the night has come, when we are old, when the body muscles are cracking and creaking, like, like a, a body parts that need engine oil to lubricate them. That time we cannot, we are not flexible. We cannot attend prayer meetings. We cannot attend church gatherings as much as we would have loved to because the spirit is willing, but the flesh has become even weaker. We are, our brains are not as smart as they ought to be at that point in time because age has come and our body mechanisms have reduced in their function. The time is coming after the rapture when the persecution of the saints will increase. Is that the time? When we want to do the work of He who has sent us, where we will not be able to get the encouragement from the brethren, where the brethren themselves will be in hiding, they will be even afraid to be to be identified as brethren. The time is coming when our children would have grown up, when the attitude they would have already had their own personalities, they would have had their character, they would have had their own perception, their opinions of life. Where you cannot easily correct the child at that point in time because the child has had his or her own impression about a particular concept. Is that the time when we want to do the work of he who has sent us? A time when we have moved from single sisters to married women and then we have to do all the arithmetic and calculate all the things that married women have to calculate. The time for Bible studies, the time for prayer and meditation is a struggle. It becomes a sacrifice. Is that a time when we want to serve God? Is it a time when as married people, the challenges of marriage itself, the couple and the two different people from two different backgrounds and their different different ways of life. It is causing you even to, to find time to pray is a problem or to pray with a peaceful heart is a problem because of the misunderstandings and the things that are happening in the marriage. Is that the time when we want to save God? Is that the time when we want to do the work of he who has sent us? Or is it now that it is day when everything is, our, is at our disposal? That we want to save God. Jesus says that as long as he is in the world. He is the light of the world. We will say that we are believers. Jesus is the light of the world. We are told in the book of Matthew. That we are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Are we hiding our lights? Is our light even shining? Or is our light dim? Is our light bright enough for others to see or is our light dangling like a bulb that wants to have low by a low voltage what is the state of our light we are preparing for our women's conference the first year we were encouraging ourselves we were asking her we were telling ourselves that we men what is jesus saying about us we were saying that Jesus needs our attention. We were trying to identify our different calls. And we were referring to the woman whose name is not mentioned, but to whom Jesus said, because of this act, she, she threw her alabaster box of ointment at Jesus' feet. Jesus said, because of this act, wherever the gospel is preached, her name will be mentioned. We graduated from identifying our calls in ministry and from getting in line, getting enlisted 
into the Salvation Army of God as women. To getting to know in the second year that there is neither male nor female in the kingdom of God. So we should not be afraid. We should not be ashamed. We should not feel intimidated. Uh, we should not be, be limited. We should not be set, looking only at the back because we are women. But that we are expected to play the role that God has called us to play. Because God is pouring out his spirit on sons and daughters. Because God is also aware of the job, of the work, of the assignment that he has given us even as women. That's an encouragement for people who have identified their call. To move in the dimension of their call. To understand that yes, God too recognizes me. This third year that we are entering into. We are taking it a step higher. After the identification of the call, after the encouragement that we too are part of God's kingdom, the next is an instruction. Jesus is telling us to go quickly to tell the people. How many of us are even conscious of what Jesus has told us as individuals before going to tell people what it is that he has told us? Are we going as quickly as Jesus has told us to go to? What are the obstacles that we are encountering on our way? Are these obstacles causing us to stop going? Or are we continuously going? We need to understand that in the ministry of the 99, one sheep is also important. God is interested in that one sister. God is interested in that one person who will stand up and say, Yes, Lord, I choose to tell them what you have told me to tell them. If the ministry of the 99 versus the one, if the one was not important, Jesus will not leave the 99 who are in to go and search for that one. Don't look at yourself as being small. Don't look at your ministry as being minute. One is not zero. If one were not yeah. important, heaven will not rejoice when one soul comes to salvation. The problem with most of us is that we tend to think that it is the 99 that matters. Glory be to God for the 99. But precious is the sight of, of is the sight in the sight of God when one person comes to salvation if you are the one to lead that one person and you refuse to go to where god has sent you to go and i refuse to do what god has caused me called me to do how would that one join the 99 we should not be the kind of people who feel limited who give excuses who give all the job all the children all the husbands the blessings of god make it rich and added no sorrow this man who was born blind was in the picture because the glory of God had to be made manifest. Mm. That situation that you're going through, that, that challenge, that difficulty that you are encountering, is because the glory of God must break forth. If only we will go quickly and tell them what it is that God has told them or told us to tell them. It is just an encouragement for us tonight not to feel that we are not playing any significant role and so we stop playing the insignificant role. Because in the sight of God, even that insignificance is of much significance. It is time for us to take time off and look at ourselves. And look at the, the, the package that God has put in us. And begin to use this package for the glory of God. And begin to use this package for the furtherance of the gospel. And begin to use this package to shine the light of Christ. In a world that is so dark. In a world that is covered by darkness. So that when the, the time comes, Jesus will tell us, those who have done their work well during the day, he will tell us, well done. And he will not say, get away from me, you unfaithful servant. May God help us to get it right in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.